Ladies and gentlemen, it's the mic. Here with the bodybuilder. Alberto Nunez, pro bodybuilder. So, Nunez here, a lot of bodybuilding and a good amount of powerlifting, both coaching and competing. So something I find that people tend to ignore is accessories. Yeah. Either, yeah, actually, people go overboard with accessories and that's all they do, or they totally ignore them. Where for uh, powerlifting purposes, I think long-term, accessories help you in the two, three, five-year term. You can't do a four-week cycle of, of uh, tricep extension, expect Absolutely. your bench to go up, but if you do triceps for five years, it's probably gonna help. Yep, uh, yep, yep. And same thing with back. I find that a big back is going to help you with all three. It's most bang for your buck like everything else. So Berto's got his favorite strength exercise, or excuse me, ex Berto's got his favorite accessory exercise for strength training. And that's why we're here with this dummy. Just you need some accessories. Just yeah, kidding. See what happens? <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're right. It's a cross-sectional area, which is a fancy way of saying muscle growth is important to a power lifter. Yeah. It's the size of your engine. Uh, and then it also it's like your armor, it keeps you safe to a yeah, certain yeah, yeah. extent, right? 100% so, um, kind of rehab, prehab. Exactly, exactly. But the issue is that it, it kind of contaminates your training. It gets into the other movements and you want to get the, like you said, the most bang for your buck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're doing a close grip, overhead, dumbbells, all this, oh. then your pressing is going to mess up your regular flat bench, which is what we're competing in. I mean, think about what do you do right before the meet? You move some of those out to yeah, make yeah, room yeah. for the main lift. You got to recover. So even when you're far away from meat and the priority is like, hey, let's put on a little bit of size in those specific muscles that, that help a power lifter, you still don't want them to be too invasive and you know overlap with your with your the training you actually want to get good at. Yeah. So uh, what I have for you guys today is a very practical movement. Uh, bodybuilders, 90% of them do not know how to row. They suck at rowing. And powerlifters, powerlifters might be worse. Oh my God, what are you doing, <laughs> right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys a row variation that is cheat proof. And here's the biggest thing: it it it, it creates minimal overlap when it comes to specifically this yeah. baby right Even here. Even glutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you use your back for damn near yeah, everything yeah. you do, right? So with this movement, minimal overlap. And then also, when it comes to, to actual like research and studies, nothing uses more musculature in yeah. your back than this movement. That's so. what I was gonna mention, as you mentioned to me, that uh, horizontal or vertical pulling is good. It's great to do some chin-ups, pull-ups, mm -hmm. lap pull-downs, but a row is gonna hit more, again, bang mm -hmm. for your buck priority. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, let's get to it and show you guys. So, we went to a gymnastics gym. Uh, we got rings, something like a TRX you mentioned TRX. could work. And even just a barbell wedged in a rack exactly. around hip height may work also, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is great because each scapula kind of gets to do its own thing. Um, and it, it's very straightforward. So, basically, when it comes to your feet, the further back you are, there we go, yeah. So, the further back you are, the harder, the easier it's going to be. Further back, the easier it's going to be. As you bring your feet forward, it gets harder. Now even harder. And then, if you want to, if, if, you, if you are, chances are uh, an intermediate-ish power lifter, you're probably gonna have to elevate your feet. Let's show them what that variation yep. looks like. This actually might even work too. Yeah, just whatever, flip it around. Yeah. And then maybe just two like pulling points, like you said, like a mm -hmm. yeah, elbow cue or pinky cue or whatever the heck you use. Somewhere in there. Perfect. Right, perfect. Okay. So most of you guys are probably going to have to use something like this because you guys are strong enough to. Um, so key points for the full inverted row is going to be you want to be in a plank position. So you don't want lazy hips. You want to squeeze your glutes, being in a decently plank position and then upon starting the row you're going to see that whether it be the bar or these rings it kind of gets away this way and this is kind of where it gets a little specific to power lifters what do you guys do when you guys bench press when you guys deadlift you guys smash into your armpits yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a nice little cue that actually helps you out on other lifts yeah it's and a great cue uh, shoulders away from your ears or shoulders over your armpits yep yep yeah. yep so you started with this yeah. And then you row. Uh, what about grip? Do you care one better than the other? Um, no, I, I would say uh, you know this grip is probably best for yeah, most. Yeah. Just take away the arms a little Yeah, bit. yeah, definitely. Um, this this will do. And you'll see if you're very planked. Let me get this straighter. <laughs> this is cool. Okay. Perfect. And and you'll see there's no cheating on this movement. There's no cheating. So, you know, you get a big dude that, you know, maybe yeah. bench presses someone to 300s. 
he might only be able to get 10, yeah, all right? Yeah. So once you get to the point where, hey, let's just say it's getting not so practical with the reps, what can you do? You can start putting a plate on you and, and you know, add on from there. Yeah. But again, super practical, you can do this anywhere. If you can cheat this row, I, I'd love to see how you yeah, do yeah. that. But there you have it. Uh, rip rate. Um, with rows, I'd say anything, anything under 10 kind of gets ugly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a power lifter, I, I like to get the volume in the higher rep ranges. Yeah, and get that strength elsewhere. Yes, yes, because uh, you know there's enough structural trauma happening in other movements. Yeah. We want to keep this like almost like a little massage, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. This is perfect because a lot of times I've done a couple videos on squat every day, and squat every day got popular because weightlifters, yep. their squat is almost like, in my opinion, powerlifters back. Yes. So yes. we could do something like this three, four, uh, as oh, we build yeah. up five yep, yep, times yep. a week, two or three sets, build that uh, volume, build that hypertrophy. Guys, check out Alberto in the description below. Appreciate you. Go get jacked.